Hey. Hi. Welcome to our show. Yeah. Welcome you to our show. Thank you. Although this time I come to you shamefaced. What's that? Uh, because I have like a million food heists in my email and I have not actually prepared one for well, today. Well, guess what, bucko? What? I, as your food heist Padawan. <laughs> you have a food I heist? I have a food heist. Someone posted it to a Brandon Sanderson subreddit and I oh. saw it. Neat. Um, so this was posted by Saucerer. Saucerer. Yes, with okay. a three for the R user on Reddit. Wow. Um, and I'm going to read. It's only a couple paragraphs because I can't read the actual <laughs> link because it's in Danish. Oh, well, this is fun. My home country, Denmark, just had a major food heist. So mm. I figured I would come here to spread the news. See, Denmark, is it going to be fish? Or is it going to be those cool little round, like, spherical pancakes? Oh, I wish. I wish. Um, but it is butter. Oh, okay. 24 tons of butter was stolen this Tuesday morning. It looks like this is a quote from the um, from the article. Uh, that equates to 120,000 individual packages. 120,000 packages of butter. Mm-hmm. Butter was stored on a semi-trailer. It was stolen from a cooling terminal. The trailer has later been found, although butterless. <gasps> So yeah. they weren't after the trailer, they were after, after the, the butter. butter. Uh, yes. And I like the quote, butterless. So either either sorcerer, <laughs> sorcerer came up with that or the uh, article writer. Mm-hmm. Um, one might say that the thieves greased the wheels. Of course. Every time. Yep. Gotta have a pun in a food heist. They did a, they did a really good job. Uh, whoever wrote this up, that's, uh, that's, that's the sort of high quality, low quality <laughs> puns that we are looking for. Um, and uh, Saucerer says the police are certain the heist was planned since the thieves knew which trailer to steal and how to handle the goods. Okay. So. Yeah, how did they know How did they know that the thieves knew how to handle the goods? I mean. For all they know, there was like a total comedy of errors as a bunch of really inept Danish thieves tried and failed to successfully move butter from one place to another. Butter leaves a trace. They would know if it were a comedy of errors. They would show up and be slipping around and things like that. Well, what if they took it into a warehouse and that warehouse is just wall-to-wall butter and then they took the truck back out and washed it off? I mean, you got you to gotta be careful. If it's wall-to-wall butter, you, that's, that butter's going to melt in there. You're mm-hmm. not gonna, you got to have a cooling facility ready. I know. So that's, that speaks to preparation. Well, These we're are, just assuming that they put it in a cooled facility so you're imagining that these incompetent thieves i'm imagining like some danish mafia boss who's like you put the butter this is not a danish accent <laughs> yeah i was gonna way. say that's a, this, this that's is quite like the danish my accent. own accent he says you put the butter in a refrigerated warehouse right and they're like uh yeah of course we did boss also i need to use the bathroom for the next three hours i'll be right back and then they run off and they try to move it into a better facility. What do you have against Danish people? That you think I love Danish people. They would not know that you have to cool butter? I just want to know how the police know that they knew how to handle the product. Well, They since, stated it with such authority. Why don't you learn Danish and go read the original <laughs> article? And maybe the, maybe the police speak about it there. Because I think these are obviously competent thieves. Okay. Your job is to come up with a pun on their names. To be clear, I mm-hmm. am not doubting the competence of the thieves. Mm-hmm. I am questioning the competence of the police. It seems like they're jumping to a lot of conclusions. Butter buccaneers? <laughs> the buccaneers? I think butter buccaneers because you've got a BU and a BU. I think you don't okay. have to. You don't have to. Uh, Buccaneer smash isn't those really things. a Danish thing, though. I bet there Vikings. were Danish pirates. Well, yeah, they're called Vikings. No, 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 no. Dan- the pirate. The the um the Vikings were I would not say pirates because their primary thing was landing and um that's true and pillaging. They didn't do a lot of right? of ship to they ship. They didn't do a lot of stealing ships. Uh, and they were they were also state sanctioned, which makes them not a pirate, right? Like they okay, were fine. they were invaders. Um, so, so I don't know. The, but did, tell us, did Denmark have like a big? Navy? I know the Dutch were a huge naval power. They were. The Mars got to have a big navy. Vikings, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. A while ago. A while ago, but I mean, you keep those traditions. I uh, don't know. Saucerer 
Tell us if there were Danish pirates. I bet there were. <laughs> During the Age of Sail, I bet there were a bunch of Danish pirates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, while you're at it, tell us if there were Dutch Vikings. <laughs> there were. I, I know that already. I, I, did, can the Dutch, like, so I'm sorry those from the Netherlands. Um, I always get a little mixed up mm-hmm. about how much, like, the Dutch are like they're obviously in that sort of Germanic feeling uh, roots, like you know the same place that the that the Anglo's, mm-hmm. uh, the Angles, yeah. as we say, uh, came from, and things like that. Like, but are they Scandinavian? Do they view themselves as Scandinavian? Can you have Vikings who are not Scandinavian? Uh, you can because okay. Viking was originally a verb, okay. not a culture or a or nationality um my understanding is that the dutch would have been called in old times frisians Uh and there's a lot of frisian vikings okay but i don't know yeah dutch um tell us tell us if you count (laughs) like if you if 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 we see a someone says viking do you be like yes that's my heritage or do you be like no 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 we had our own thing we had our own the vikings are the the danes and they're the norwegians and the the swedish you know and the geats over there which were Mm -hmm. the geats were where the geats were but yeah i don't know uh but you know that's what uh beowulf and his his folks um let us know let us uh us people who have not spent (laughs) enough time on european history i bet a lot of uh people in europe have you know yeah have have a good understanding of this. I bet they do. Cool. Um, well, so, thank you for having a food heist to yes. cover my own inadequacies. Now, I feel as inadequate as a Danish police officer. <laughs> that is not me. That's him. That's him. <laughs> Direct your hate mail at Mr. Wells. Um, and we, we may have played that up, but it really did happen. You were reaching for your phone and be like, oh, yeah. I don't have a food ice. And I said, I have one. Let's mm-hmm. start. I've got one. Yeah. So we so. recreated that dramatically for you, but it actually happened. That, that was a historical recreation. And in fact, it took a moment for Dan to realize I was saying, no, 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 I have a food heist. Because I said I had one. He's like, oh, I got to get food heist. I'm like, no, Dan, yeah. <laughs> I have one. I I am a food heist Padawan yeah. now. I'm your apprentice. Excellent. In this. You're my graduate student. Yes. Do I, do I get a... This is my first one. I don't know if I deserve graduate student yet. I don't know. All I can think about is if you are a graduate student, you graduate with an actual doctorate, mm-hmm. which I didn't do because mine is honorary. Um, what kind of cool... Like a doctorate in food heists, you got to have some kind of neat sash that you wear or we put cream puffs on your mortarboard. I don't know. I no, think... a charcuterie board. <laughs> oh, no, that's perfect. Oh, your your mortar there is we go. charcuterie. You just have the fanciest lunchables <laughs> in the world perched atop your head while you graduate. Oh, I love this. Uh, I do not think I can count as a graduate because I haven't discovered any of my own. Yeah. Someone posting it to Reddit and me seeing it mm-hmm. on my subreddit, that's, that's entry level that's, food heist prep. That's good. That's where mm-hmm. you start. Yep. But yeah, there, there needs to be some... Mm-hmm. First person research. Look what you've done to me. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, we're going to talk about Spider Man. Spider Man. So we are going to talk about uh, Spider Verse Two across, across the, the Spider Verse. And we promised it and teased it, and now we're actually going to do it for yeah. Real. So for real, uh, this will include spoilers for Across the Spider Verse. Though we will start with a spoiler free portion, mm-hmm. like we normally do. Um, and then we will give fair warning when we are going into <laughs> full-on spoilers. Yeah. So, um, Dan, what did you think? What did I think? Yeah. You always start this way. Yeah. And then I have to be the jerk that's like, it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And that is it what you're saying? Yeah, that is, that is what I'm saying. Dan, like, you're such a jerk. Into the Spider-Verse mm-hmm. was groundbreaking and brilliant and touching and everything. Mm-hmm. And Across the Spider-Verse was... Here's more of that. I thought it was better. You thought it was better. I thought it was better. I don't even understand. How, what, what, what about it was better? Uh, they went further with the styles. So one of the coolest things about this one, if you compare it to the first one, mm-hmm. is in the first one, you can tell they're a little worried. 
um, that they're like they're not jumping to other dimensions and changing the art style. They're bringing mm-hmm. a few people with an interesting art style together. Yeah. Uh, in this one, if we go to another dimension, the entire art style of the whole thing changes mm-hmm. dramatically in brilliant ways, often mimicking a comic book dedicated to a specific, specific, char- specific character. The color palettes change, the, not just the art style, but the color palette yeah. and the, um, the way that they use. Um, so I don't have the artistic language to say, but there's like three things they're changing. One is the color palette. One is like, what kind of art are we doing? Are we doing like, you know, linear, arty, comic booky style? But another is like how much they like, like some don't have strong lines. They have soft lines. Some mm-hmm. are abstract. Like you go, that's what I'm looking for is like the backgrounds are yeah. not detailed or detailed. And some of them, it's completely abstract and it's just brilliant. Yeah, I, um, I will agree with that. Yeah. Uh, like the the punk one. Yeah. Um, whose name I can't remember. Well, that, I, should we say, should we leave that away for, until spoilers? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to say, uh, his art style, even mm-hmm. walking around with the rest of the characters, yeah. was noticeably different in a way that the first movie didn't really get Completely into. Completely leveled up from the first uh, yeah. from the first film. Because the first movie, you've got, here's the black and white one, and here's the anime one, and here's yeah. the cartoony one, but they all feel like they fit in the same world together. Yeah. Uh, whereas they didn't bother doing that in the second one. Like, uh, since you mentioned him, Will, there is a punk one, but <laughs> Spider-Punk um, mm-hmm. like, has a distortion field around him where the... Oh, sorry, I tapped the microphone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, on purpose. On purpose this time, where it's kind of bleeding out and kind of um, out around him. So the whole, like, mm-hmm. he's like a cut out from another reality yeah. moving through this space it's beautiful it's really cool and it's for him choppy and out you know scribbles outside the lines and it just really really emphasizes who he is mm-hmm. with uh, an art style um i completely think they leveled up um i think this is just the single most incredible animated film of all time for use of stylistic differences uh, uh, with that caveat, I'll uh-huh. give it to you. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, what else? What else did you like about it? What else did I like about it? Um, so it's difficult to to break away from origin stories, mm-hmm. okay? Um, it is, and origin stories are in a lot of ways, particularly for someone like Spider-Man, kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Um, so number one, it's not an origin story. It's dealing with the difficult ask, like the first one kind of wrapped up with a neat bow and that's powerful, right? It's really yeah. well done. Um, I love when stories do that, but this one, it's like, now it's messy. It's that neat bow that you knew couldn't be that neat. Like his it, relationships with relationships with his parents. Mm-hmm. It's still just messy yeah. and they're all good people but it's still broken in interesting, realistic ways that has just a little more depth to it, um, I feel like. Uh, Maybe equal depth. I'll say equal depth. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know that the narrative is stronger than the first one, Um, but I would say that that is a, a... I think they do as good a job with this idea as they did with the first one with an origin story. And then the other thing I would say is uh, the first one did not lean into multiverse. And I know we're all tired of multiverse. I'm yeah. tired of multiverse. But um, if you are going to have it, I want something that's, that says, all right, we have it. It's, we got to do something like everywhere, everything everywhere all at once, where the multiverse then has to be part of the narrative um, obviously not, this isn't a weakness of the first one, mm-hmm. but it is absolutely a strength of the second one that they're like, all right, we have to deal with the fact that this is a giant multiverse. How do we deal with all of these aspects that we'll talk about in the spoiler section, yeah. um, in a way that, you know, that we can tell a narrative that doesn't break a narrative. Um, and much like everything everywhere at once, which granted did a little bit better, but didn't have the constraints of being part of uh, a series, universe. a pre-existing yeah. universe. Um, I think Spider Verse did a fantastic job with that. Mm-hmm. The uh, the multiversal stuff was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked being able to see some of the other things and some of the other Spider Men. Um, 
I think that the story was significantly weaker, uh, partly for reasons that we can't discuss until the spoiler section, uh, but just in general, it felt much more directionless. Okay. Uh, it wasn't as tight. It wasn't as as satisfying. Even not not just talking about the ending, but you know all the steps leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I disagree with you about the family relationships, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bit where oh, and this is spoilers. super minor spoilers. There's part where he brings a cake. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't consider that a, a okay. meaningful spoiler. He brings a cake to his family, and the cake of course, gets thrashed by the time he gets there. Mm -hmm. And while I recognize that not every family communicates effectively, um, it felt like they were just retreading the same conflicts and styles that they had in their arguments in the first movie. And so I wanted what you're talking about. I wanted more of that sense of, yeah, he's a teenager. One good hug and realization is not going to change their entire relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, And I felt like I didn't get that. I felt like they just kind of fell back on previous conflicts and just retreaded them. I think there's a nuance to it and a different nuance that I think we should just go ahead and break to our spoiler section. Okay. Spoiler section. Spoiler. From now on, we're going to talk spoiler. I think there's a distinction here that I really like. Okay. uh, But it, Maybe I'm maybe I'm projecting onto the film. Mm-hmm. In the first one, he sincerely wanted his parents' approval and was chasing them. And in this one, I don't think he knows. Yeah, that's a like, and that's a thing that happens as you age as a teenager. Mm-hmm. You go from I need this validation to I don't know where my place is, and I'm not sure I want it anymore. I'm not yeah. sure. Like he's doing that sort of teenager thing where he's now pushing them away. Instead of reaching for them and not being able to connect. And one mm-hmm. is kind of a older, middle grade, younger YA thing. And another one is that kind of next step in YA. And I think they covered that. I think that scene that you're talking about with the cake shows that he's now angry at his dad. Uh, for, you know, when that's not, you know, he was frustrated, but mm-hmm. never angry at his father in the first one. And now he's angry. He's like, you know what? I'm saving the world. And this this guy, I, I don't have time for what he for mm-hmm. his drama anymore um and so what if i want to have a girl here right like um all of that stuff feels really real to me and a natural evolution of yeah we patched it all up no we didn't you're still a teenager mm-hmm. miles you're still gonna have these things and um i like that yeah uh, i i don't I can see all of that, but mm-hmm. I, for me, it didn't land. It mm-hmm. didn't feel like they did that successfully, though I can agree that that's what they were trying to do. Now, I will say that the, the biggest flaw, in my opinion, of the film is likely one that you danced around and that um, whichever producer or executive didn't let them name it part one. Mm-hmm. as it was in script form, as I understand, yeah, um, did them a huge disservice, I think. Definitely. Um, because I had been following it as part one forever, and I knew when they made the change, they're like, well, we didn't call it this. And then there was marketing speak, and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. the executives won't let him call us this. It's half of a movie. So I went into it fully expecting this to be act one. Mm. And and a bit of act two, maybe. Yeah. And I think the biggest weakness is I think they stopped it in the wrong place. They didn't stop it at the natural break point at the end of what I would consider like, you know, your your mini arc of act one, two, three. They went one step further to him to give the cliffhanger instead of mm-hmm. him being trapped in the other world with an evil him. Yeah. And I think that was a mistake. I think that little extra nugget was the wrong move. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I really disliked. And to Mm -hmm. be fair, probably soured the entire experience more than it should have. Mm -hmm. To end on that note of, um, you know, here's the evil you and he's Mm -hmm. the prowler in this universe. And this is our big cliffhanger that in the next movie, we're going to have to deal with this guy. And... You know, that's a character that we got to see for two seconds. I have no, zero emotional investment in caring about this evil Prowler kid. Yep. Um, It came out of nowhere and felt just massively 
that's how you ended this movie? It felt like a step down from the escalation that was really interesting leading mm-hmm. up to it. Um, yeah. And the, you know, like um, gathering of his friends, you know, and Spider-Punk is back. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that, that is such a perfect ending where Spider-Punk is back. He's got everybody. We're going to help Miles. And then we have this extra stinger with, a, again, a character that we don't care about in mm-hmm. the villain. And, yeah. and it feels like um, as narrative, we're like, oh, no. Now he's going to spin his heels for a little bit in a little side quest. Um, and yeah. who it, cares? It, and and really a lot of that, I think, comes down to the way they were mm-hmm. presenting it or the way they were forced by executives yeah. to present it, right? Because like you say, it is a huge step down in terms of danger, in mm-hmm. terms of threat and conflict. And yet the way it's presented is like, mm-hmm. this is just getting worse and worse. And the whole multiverse is after him. And all these things are going wrong. And the spot's way bigger. And also, dun, 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 there's this other random dude. Right. And the way he is the cliffhanger makes it seem like he's supposed to be the biggest and baddest of the villains. Yep. And he's not. Nope. Uh, I mean, obviously, we are interested in the whole concept that was the theme of the movie, which is, you know, the canon event, which has become mm-hmm. a meme now. Yeah. But um, that's one of the things that I like. I'm like, all right, if you're going to deal with multiverses and you're going to deal with all these Spider-Men who all have the same backstory, mm-hmm. you're going to have to make that a theme of your story. And and that's part of your world building. Um, and, you know, one of the great stories you can tell with the multiverse is this idea of free will and things like that. Yeah. And they leaned into it. Um, I thought the entire sequence in, um, uh, what do they call it? New M- Mumbai? M- Mumbatan, I think. Yeah. Mumba. Yeah. Mum- yeah. Um, uh, Mum, anyway. Uh, Mumbai, Manhattan, Manhattan. Mumbai. Uh, was just fantastic. I um, loved it until the end. I felt like they whiffed the canon event reveal mm. at the end. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, the way they were setting it up when he introduces himself and they Mm -hmm. do that thing where, let's try this again, that they took from the first movie. And his life is perfect and there's no problems and there's no conflicts at all. Yep. And you kind of think to yourself, well, that guy's in for a surprise. Um, But the, the whole thing with the canon event, it felt very railroady. For Gwen to say, no, don't go down there. I'm not going to tell you why. It's kind of dangerous. Rather than just saying, no, don't go down there. You're going to ruin everything. Um, I don't know. That bothered me. Okay. Again, I it was handled I, just I, fine. Uh, people communicating poorly really just pissed me off in this movie. How many children do you have? <laughs> I have six, and none of them can communicate properly. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know. Listen, uh, there are times when miscommunication feels like, oh, yep, that's just how characters are. And there are times when it feels like the writers didn't know how to let this happen. And so they just fudged some things in order to make their thing happen. I can see a little bit of that. And to give you kind of an acknowledgement, I can see a little bit of that in the canon event thing. I do not see that in the, the father and him thing. Okay. Uh, Because he's acting like a real teenager (laughs) and he's acting like a parent who doesn't, his father's acting like a parent who doesn't know how to deal with this. You know, the kid that used to idolize him in every moment, Mm -hmm. now you just don't understand and can't connect to. Um, But I will give it to you. The the thing with Gwen and the canon event thing, um, there was some clunkiness to that narrative. that uh, that add, that the hand that I can see the hand of the writer, mm-hmm. but I don't think the average viewer can because I don't think it's that clunky. Um, okay. And so um, I was totally fine with it. Plus, once again, the art style, Mumbai, <laughs> Manhattan, just I mean it looked cool. Like yes, yes, not I'm, just I'm not de- not debating that. Just cool, <laughs> like complete level up. Like when S- Spider Verse came out. All other American animated films have been playing mm-hmm. catch up since. And it's caused some stretching in some great ways, like we talked about. Um, have you seen Last Wish? Did you? Did we, we talked about No, uh, Puss what's and Boots Last, Last Wish? Puss in Boots, The Last Witch. Oh, no. I know that it's awesome yeah. and that I need to see it. It but has I no right being as good as it is. And I think you can point directly at Spider Verse and them saying, 
We just need to level up we, our. We got to be better than yeah. we are. Yeah. Level up our. Take chances and risks with art style, uh, and with narrative structure. Mm -hmm. And boom, a uh, really great movie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which we talked about. Same yeah. sort of thing. Um, and so I was hoping that Spider Verse would not play it safe. Mm -hmm. And would go a step further. And when those Gwen Stacy scenes happen with her and her parent yeah. um, that is painted in um, almost watercolory backgrounds or vague mm -hmm. pictures of light. And that's her whole world was so incredibly done. Yeah. That, yep. I'm like, all right, you did. You, you, you managed to level it up. You managed to take what mm -hmm. was already the the thing everyone else was chase, chasing and you took another step. And you did it. Yeah. The, that entire, let's call it act two, yeah. um, where they are in the headquarters of mm -hmm. the spider patrol or whatever they call themselves. Yep. Uh, that was, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. I loved that entire thing. Uh, the way it looked, the way that they, you know, went out of their way to include different styles. When Ben Riley showed up and he was this angst-ridden '90s guy, yeah, um, all of that I loved. The chase scene where they're all going after him, um, that by itself uh, mm -hmm. is one of the greatest mini movies I've ever seen. I thought it was wonderful. And then Donald Glover shows up, like, yep, as a person. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, he's from like he was the Prowler in uh, the MCU. Yeah, in, like in, the first uh, Spider-Man MCU in, in Homecoming. Yeah, he shows up, uh, and we very briefly get his name, and he—that is the name of the Prowler. Mm -hmm. Were that character to eventually become the Prowler? Yep. So, so that was that was nice. Wasn't like there a video game one too? Um, like from anyway, there they, there are so many. They did they did a very wonderful job with mm -hmm. all of that and like i said leaning into the the multiverse and yeah um and yeah uh, i liked what they did with um peter and mayday mm -hmm. as well cuz that was in the yeah. first movie that was peter's whole thing was he broke up with mj cuz he didn't want to have kids and she did and then seeing him come around and like kind of off screen but yeah he tied mm -hmm. that off Yep, and uh, has grown as a person, and he's now a very good but also very terrible father. <laughs> yep, yep. No, that was that was great, and oh, there was something in there I was going to say that I liked a lot too. Um, I lost the thread, um, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I, I suppose ultimately my primary complaint about this movie, which to be fair, mm -hmm. I did like a lot. I give mm -hmm. it a B. Okay. okay, that's that's not a bad movie. It's mm -hmm. one that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, is one of the same problems I had with Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning, which mm -hmm. is it didn't feel complete on its own. Mm -hmm. um, Infinity War was part one of two, and it felt like its own thing. That you got to the end, and there was a conclusion. See, but and I don't think a movie has to. Lord of the Rings, um, the um, Two Towers film, it's my favorite of the series. Yeah. And it's not self-contained. I, it's not self-contained, mm -hmm. but you get to the end and there's a resolution yep. to some of the character arcs that have been and going. I, I we don't get that in this. You, I think you would if they hadn't added the stinger at the end. I think there is, there is a full character arc to... Um, to Miles mm -hmm. coming, realizing that the thing he wants so badly to be part of is deeply flawed, turning against it and finding his own way out with a really clever twist that he doesn't go back mm -hmm. to, right? And popping in and then being stranded is as good, I think, as Lord of the Rings episode one's character arc wise, where we've where the fellowship is disintegrated. Mm -hmm. It's still the middle of a story, uh, but but decisions have been made and people have changed and you know spider punk showing up and having gathered a yeah. group to fight against him at being able to make their own you know quantum stabilizer teleporter thingies mm -hmm. um all of that i think works as set up for now we need to bring down oscar isaac yeah um and find out what's really going on with you know worlds well, jason schwartzman more so than oscar isaac but yeah yes okay because he was the spot Right. No, I think... But yes. Spider-Man 2099 was also 
I think Spider Man twenty ninety nine is the true is the villain. I think he is, but I could be wrong. Eh, we'll see. Um, e- either way, he's the so. Both mm-hmm. the spot. The spot is great. The spot is a really cool villain. I loved the spot. I yeah. loved every scene he was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved everything about him. Yep. Um, so everything you're saying is correct. Yes. And I think you're right about that. But mm-hmm. at the same time, the fact that we're seeing part one of two, especially the fact that we didn't know we were seeing part one of two. I did. Because I sure didn't. I didn't um, warn you about that? You warned me and then I forgot. Okay. Um, I think because you're... I got to the end and, it, and the movie just... Like it introduced Prowler, and I'm like, "What another villain? How are they going to tie this up?" And then they ended the movie like five seconds later. Yeah, um, and I realized, "Oh yeah, Brandon warned me about this." But so some of the baggage that comes with that, for example, is why on earth does this movie start with Gwen? We get this whole Gwen backstory, which doesn't fit the Miles story they're telling, and then at the very end, they tie it off with her leading the new group that Spider-Punk mm-hmm. assembled, yeah. and you think, okay, now this makes sense with that weird beginning. But it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, because she, um, the canon event is very deeply personal to her, mm-hmm. and we've already kind of seen it from Miles' eyes, and so we need to be, like the flashbacks and things, we need to be seeing like what's going on with Gwen and, um, you know, be building to more, um, m- like, yeah, I assume and part I, two, we hit a canon event for Gwen, right? Yeah, and, and I think that yeah. that kind of stuff is inevitable. Yeah. And that is why this part one, part two stuff doesn't really work for me because so much of the texture we're getting in one has zero purpose and zero payoff until we see a completely different I th- movie. I think it is totally fine. It's I accepted it in Dune. I accepted it in Lord of the Rings. I can accept it in this. They were wrong to not call it part one. It's a four-hour movie with an intermission. Yeah. Lord of the Rings is not three movies. Dune is not going to be two movies. Mm-hmm. I'm okay, and I'm, in fact, I wish they would do more of this. <laughs> I, I like long-form storytelling, mm-hmm. and I would much rather... Um, get you know two Spider Verse movies that together are stronger and longer and more in depth than any one could possibly Rather than be. The one mini episode. I'm like I'm really glad they split Dune. Now, granted, Hollywood does this too much. Mm-hmm. They split things that don't deserve to be split. Case in point, the uh, the Hobbit movies yeah. didn't work as three movies. But when it works, I think you have something stronger as a result. I think Lord of the Rings is stronger for having been three movies. Yes. Um... But I can't give Across the Spider-Verse a pass just because it did the same thing Lord of the Rings did. Because in my opinion, it, they didn't do it well. What? Um, the, yeah. Because it, it was not satisfying. I can watch the Lord of the Rings movies, and even in the first time in the theater, I was like, okay, I yeah, feel like I've seen an entire story. You've read Lord of the Rings. Even though this is part of a different thing. You knew about Lord of the Rings. I think That, that is true. I think that tainted it. That's absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Um. But right, like, uh, and I will back up them making uh, Infinity War and um, Endgame two separate titles, not part one, part two. Mm-hmm. Those do feel like two separate films. Um, but I don't. I think we'll get this one, and it won't feel like two separate th- films. It'll be a four-hour movie. Um, and so I went into the film judging it on those merits. That's mm. what they wanted to make. And I had a fantastic time. I loved the art style. I thought that uh, they were doing a really good job with um, with building the characters and um, just, yeah. you know. Now, the second one could fall on its face. The mm-hmm. whole Prowler introduction and things has me a little worried, right? Yeah. Uh, and if it falls on its face, that's going to absolutely destroy my enjoyment of this one. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I guess we'll see. Yeah, I will see. I don't know. Uh, I I feel very torn. It's a beautiful movie. Uh, it has some incredible stuff in it. It has some good ideas in it. It just never gelled for me. If we had stopped RRR at the intermission point, you would have the same opinion of it. <laughs> I probably would. Mm-hmm. Well, and this is... I, I am very inconsistently just going to complain about the length of movies in general. Mm. Um. Not long I, enough. I feel no. I feel yeah, I like know. the the lengthening of Hollywood, um, our inability to tell 
two hour or even hour and a half stories like we used to do and which used to work and which used to be great. And now everything has to be two and a half, three hours long because I, I, I have strong disagreements about Hollywood pacing. I think that they are, they are losing their edge. And this to me is an example of that. Uh, I disagree. I mean, I think Hollywood pacing's always had a problem. I think a lot we're we're looking back at the ones that worked at really the well, good ones that we remember. Yes, that's true because their structure worked. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think they've always had a trouble with Act Three. I think they've always always had a lot of these things, and um, I did, I don't think nowadays the fact that we get you know an Oppenheimer that's extra long means that Hollywood has lost its way. Um, I mean, well, Oppenheimer is far from the only example of movies just getting longer and longer, mm -hmm. but yes. So feel free to tell us in the comments how wrong Dan is. (laughs) You're wrong too, Ben.